back on the 383. You've been working hard all day getting the bob weights set up. Yeah, I had a nap. <laughs> you know, I turned 65 a couple weeks ago, so I can take a nap every day now. Yeah. Anyway, I went through and weighed all the pistons, weighed all the rods, did some mixing and matching there to get them within a gram of each other overall. So we need, when we put this together, we got to pay attention to which piston and which rod go together yep. and which pin. Yep. Okay, so we need to go through here and get all of our bob weights set up. Got the fixture out here so we can measure the big ends and the small ends of the connecting rods. Zero our scale. We're just going to start with the big ends here. 420.7. For 20.4, for 21.2, for 21.2, for 21.6, for 21.1, for 20.8, for 21.3. So we've got an average of 421 grams on the big end, a difference from the highest to lowest of 1.2 grams, which is pretty close. And the way these rods are designed, there's there's not a balance pad on them. It's not like stock connecting rods out of a 350 that have a, a big balance pad that you can remove weight from so ideally we don't have to do any any grinding on these and at 1.2 grams we're already fairly close now we're going to do the small end re-zero the scale 153.7 one 153.2 154.1 154.2 number four 153.4, 154.0, number two, 154.3 on number one, which gives us an average 153.9, difference of 1.2. So by the numbers on the box from SCAT, the big end is supposed to be 421, the small end is supposed to be 153.0, or 154.0, so we're right on the money there. A big shout out to UEM Pistons for sending out a set of their Icon FHR series forged pistons for this build, which we'll touch on in more detail in the next video when we show finish honing the block. Now we're gonna go through and measure all of our pistons, see what they weigh. 500.9, 500.2, 500.6, 500 500.4. This is without the pin, by the way. 500.0, 499.6, 499.6, 499.5. Do the pins. 132.7, With the pins only being 0.2 grams off, mixing and matching them really isn't going to get us anywhere so i'm just going to put them with a piston then we'll do our balancing from there all right now going through with the pistons and the pins matched 633.5 so difference of one and a half across all eight I usually like to be under a gram difference across all of them, which is overkill for 99% of applications, but you know, we can hit it pretty easily. On our small end of the connecting rods, we came out about 1.2 grams different from lightest to heaviest. The pistons and pin combinations that we have set up, we came out with a difference of one and a half. What we could do right now is go in and start, you know, grinding away a little bit of material on the heavier pistons and bring them all down to the lightest weight to try and get within that one gram. Or what's a little bit easier to do is I took the small end weights of the rods and I took the piston weights, the piston and pins, and I sorted the rods from heaviest to lightest and the pistons from lightest to heaviest. And now we have a combination here. So if we combine connecting rod number six with piston number seven, we're 786.4 grams on the small end of the rod plus the piston because we're looking at our reciprocating weight here. When we do that, our difference comes out to be 0 0.6 grams. So that's the way we're going to do it so that we don't have to do any grinding on any material here. We can just pair up number six connecting rod with uh, number seven piston, number one rod with number eight piston, four rod with six piston, and so on. And that'll get us within our one gram tolerance that we're kind of looking for. Locks. 
30.5 for all of them divided by 8 is 3.8 grams. Rod bearing, 43.5. Rings will take an average again. 443.3 divided by 8, 55.41. Okay, so I've got our Phytron machine shop software pulled up, doing a balance sheet here to calculate the bob weights. So put in our piston weight, piston rings we just calculated, pin locks, total rod weight I put in, big rod end weight, bearing inserts, 43.5 grams. All this is calculated in grams, by the way. Two rods per journal per throw. 50% reciprocating factor, and we're doing an oil allowance of three and a half grams. Uh, that's just kind of a rough estimation for the oil that is spinning basically in the in the throw of the crankshaft, as well as kind of around and clinging to the assembly. So three and a half grams there, and that's spitting out total bob weight of 1778.42 grams. So each half needs to be 889.21, roughly. We'll set up our bob weights and spin the crank, but first I want to let you know that your last chance to order the Four Strokes mouse pad in collaboration with Epic Desk is coming to a close. Due to high demand, we've extended the pre-order through Wednesday, August 16th, but that's it. This 930 by 400 millimeter mouse pad is custom limited edition merch from our channel based on the Four Stroke internal combustion engine. Suck, squeeze, bang, and blow. For those of you who spend time in front of a computer, this mouse pad has a smooth surface for a smooth mouse glide while also being thicker than most mouse pads for a comfortable feel. If you don't work in front of the computer, I've actually ordered several for myself to be used around the shop as work mats to keep delicate components safe while we're at work. These mouse pads are a limited edition produced to the highest quality. Once the pre-order window closes on Wednesday, this design will never be sold again, so be sure to check out the link in the description and order now so you don't miss out. Last engine I balanced had absolute monster bob weights. This one, we're gonna be taking quite a chunk of that off, actually. Our bob weight total is 1778.4, so we need 889.2 on each half. We're supposed to be 1778.4. 1778.4, 1778.3 it kind of bounced there. 1778.3. 1778.1 so well within our tolerance there basically weighed everything got our bob weights set up and we've got the crank up here on the machine this crankshaft is externally balanced on the rear neutral balanced on the front so we're going to start out without the balancer on it but we did have to put the flywheel on because you can see there's a big counterweight on there that it will not balance without that being on there and of course you just set up your bob weights and got those all indexed on there 90 degrees apart so we'll spin it up this way first see where we're at we'll balance this much of the engine then we'll put the balancer on and theoretically if we've got a good balancer that is neutral balance it should not change anything if it does that's going to tell us that the balancer is off a little bit and we'll have to make some corrections on it to bring it back into zero Eighty-six grams on the right. Is it in a spot you can remove it? How big a hole is that? <laughs> okay, so I had it with a half-inch drill bit, which would be three point five uh, <laughs> inches <laughs> inches deep. <laughs> so we're gonna drill to halfway to China on that one. Yeah. So on our first spin, it's saying we need to remove about eighty-seven grams on the back side of the crank. Basically, it's programmed to read. Right here on this counterweight is where we'd be basically told the machine that we want to remove material. On the left side right now, it's saying 7.6 grams on, on this leftmost counterweight, the counterweight. But you always start with the heavy side first. 87 grams, and I rotated it around to 51 degrees, the way it reads. It's basically saying right here on the edge of this counterweight, we need to take 86 grams off. I had it programmed with a half inch diameter drill bit just to start with. And that would be a three a three and a half inch deep hole to do that, which obviously we're not gonna do. Let's change the setup here. That's still gonna be a deep freaking hole. That's still an inch deep hole. That sounds a little more realistic. Yeah, it's a little a little better. Um I don't wanna do that right now. Let's go eat. Let's go eat supper. <laughs>
Don't make the cook mad. Came back from dinner. I actually reprogrammed a little bit because I didn't have quite the right diameter on our uh, counterweights. We still need to do 85 grams. Our 85 grams need to come out right here at the very end of that counterweight. So I took the marker here and I just put us a little green color on here just so we can see a little bit easier. I measured the width of that counterweight, which is about one and a quarter inch. Half of that is 625 thousandths. And I'm just gonna lightly use the calipers to scribe a little line on there. I know that's kind of hard on the end of the calipers, but uh, we often use them that way. And then I'm also gonna come back in and scribe a line. So that's gonna be the center. According to our machine here, what it say, 15 16 inch diameter hole, just shy of an inch deep. Yep. Is that what it was? Yep. So we'll go ahead and center punch that. We'll start with a smaller bit to start the hole, and then we'll drill that in, come back, and try it again, see what happens. Forty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy. That's it. Look like a real crankshaft with a hole in it. Yeah, it finally has a hole. Okay, so we're 17 on the right still and five on the left. So five right here on the left on the front counterweight. So we need 17 grams right about there. Okay, 430 thousandths. Okay, ready? Yep. You got it set so it'll ramp up. I thought I did. Yep. So that's seven, 770 RPM right there. You know, that's crazy to think that's just idle speed. Okay, 4.6 on the left, 4.6 on the left side, 3.2 on the right side. So the 3.2 it wants Kind of right on the edge of that counterweight. Where did it want this? 11, 11 and a half. half. So right in line, right yeah, here. Right up in. Which is a. In the top there. But we're close. Really close, actually. Yeah, really like, close. Like, honestly, this is yeah. probably good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but if, it, if this was a bone stock motor, it would probably be good. But let's get it closer. So we've got, what, three holes? Three holes in the crank. Hopefully that's all we're gonna have to put in it. Maybe a little touch up grinding from yeah. here, but not. Or at least done drilling in those hole in new, new holes. New holes. Whoa. Half on the left, 6.6 .6 on the right. You're at. Uh, pretty much non-existent. Look okay? Looks good to me. Hey, how about that? Wow, that is unreal. 0 0.04 on the left, 0 0.3 on the right. I just had yeah. to will it into existence because I. <laughs> I said before we spun this, I said, I think we call this good no matter what. Yeah, and that's where I was at. I thought, you know what, we was already so close. We We've should... long since reached the point of diminishing returns. Right, that last little bit of basically polishing on that counterweight there to get that last little bit off. I thought, you know what, at this point, we'll do what we can here, just a little bit more. 
whatever it is, it is because we have long since gone past the point of we're just chasing our tails here, wasting time that we're just not really gaining much on. But that last little bit really did bring this thing in. <laughs> I think this is about the closest we've ever had one. Probably so. So let's spin it again and see. But so we ended up with one little hole there on the front counterweight and on the rear. We have a medium hole and a big yeah, old hole. Big I mean, hole. that looks like what you would see on a stock balance yeah, that job. Looks like from a, a, crank. a stock crankshaft. And then coming in. rounded all of that edge there. Yeah. But uh, let's spin that one more time, see if we're going to repeat that. Okay. Point 0.3 and point 0.04. Huh. I think that's exactly that's the same. That's exactly what we had. So now the only thing left to do is we do need to put the bottom timing gear on there and the harmonic balancer, but they're all neutral balance, so that should not change anything. But we do want to put those on just to check. Uh, but what do you say we do that another day? Yeah, I'm going to call it. I'm going to yeah. go find some food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry again. <laughs> We're still learning how to balance. Right. And self-taught, you know, because you, I don't know, did... Did you have no, guys I, have a balancer no, at the shop was, you worked at 40 this, years ago? No, this this is first balancer I've been around. Yeah. I mean, so. we've had plenty of engines balanced, and we've looked at what they looked like when they came back, and it's like, well, I hope that's right. Yeah. No way of telling. It's but, a learning experience, but I think we're getting the hang of yeah. it. A little more efficient with it. We haven't got a perfect setup here. This needs a drill press right on the balancer instead of having to take the crank off over to the other machine to drill that that really eats up the time yeah for us when we do these so you got to start somewhere okay so moving along on the 383 we'll probably on monday stick that balancer on there and spin yeah. it and get the balance make sure the balancer is is zero balance like it should be kind of finish up machine work on the block and get things going together yeah we're so. real close to being ready to <laughs> assemble here yeah stay tuned